Have you ever wondered what are the best grammar books out there? Which ones should you pick up? And are they actually worth reading? Hi there, my name is Brian Collins. Welcome to the Become a Writer Today channel. So I've spent years on and off reading and buying various grammar books. Some of them are reference books that I'll pick up and look up when I have a grammar question or a grammar query. And others are actually a book that I'll sit down and read over a cup of coffee because they're actually entertaining and fun. That's right, grammar can be entertaining and fun. In this video, I'm going to profile just nine of the best grammar books that are out there. And at the end of the video, I'm also going to talk about a resource that would help you with your grammar. And I'll also explain where you can find even more great grammar books for your bookshelf. Hope you enjoy the content in this roundup of the best grammar books out there right now today, both old and new. If you do hit thumbs up and to get more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. In the early 2000s, I trained as a journalist. And back then we learned about a little book that was published all the way back in 1935 that a lot of journalists keep on their desk when they want to reference grammar issues, grammar mistakes and other writing questions. That little book has been republished many times since then. It's called The Elements of Style by William Strunk and E.B. White. It's a short book, you could actually read through it in one sitting. There's a section in the book that's dedicated to good writing, which is applicable whether you write fiction or non-fiction. There's also lots of reference sections in the book. Let me give you two examples. So in one particular chapter in the book, it talks about overused and unnecessary words. And it says that the word certainly is used indiscriminately by some speakers a bit like very, and it's often unnecessary. In other words, it's a word you should cut from your writing. There's also a great section about the pearls of overwriting in your work. And William Strunk and E.B. White say, rich ornate prose is hard to digest, generally unwholesome and sometimes nauseating. So the next time somebody use complicated language, terms and phrases, send them a copy of this. The next grammar book to consider adding to your writing desk or your writing shelf is this one. Fowler's Modern English Usage. And again, this book has been around for a long time. That's because the original author, Henry Watson Fowler, was born in 1858 and passed away in 1933. He was a legendary figure in the, I suppose, academia and in circles where people debated the merits of the English language and how to use what terms and various phrases. Anyway, it's a type of reference book that you'll use if you're ever unsure if you're using the right word and you want more than a dictionary definition. So for example, I looked up a word at random before recording this video. The word is Friday, and in this particular section in the book, it explains when you should use Friday, singular, and Friday with an S, plural. And it explains that Friday, singular, is normally the preferred usage. You'll find lots of different examples like this uh, about how to use I and E's, vowels, pronouns, and so on. So if you've ever got a grammar question, this is probably the Bible that you're gonna to go to to check if you're using something correctly or if you're making what could be an embarrassing writing mistake. Eats, Shoots and Leaves is a fantastically accessible grammar book that was written by Lynn Truss, who is the former host of a BBC Radio 4 show. Now the book is a good read in that you can sit and read it from cover to cover, which isn't, which isn't something that you could say about many grammar books. It has sections dedicated or chapters dedicated to the correct usage of apostrophes, commas, semicolons, exclamation marks, question marks, quotation marks, dashes, brackets, and all of your basic grammar and punctuation queries. And in fact, Lynn dedicates the book to the memory of those striking Bolshevik printers of St. Petersburg, because in 1905, they demanded that they were paid the same rate for punctuation marks as for letters. And she alludes that this thereby directly precipitated the first Russian revolution. There's also practical examples inside of the book like this one. A woman without her man, comma, is nothing. An old sexist and derogatory statement, which basically says that a woman without the help of a man is nothing. On the other hand, we can change the meaning of this sentence with the humble comma. A woman, comma, without her, comma, man is nothing. Now the sentence means the complete opposite. There are many more examples like this inside of Eats, Shoots and Leaves, and I particularly found the ones about the semicolon helpful. Definitely a grammar book that belongs on your shelf. Can bad writing be fatal? Yes, it can, according to Steven Pinker, the author of this classic modern grammar book, The Sense of Style. According to Steven Pinker, the wording of a warning notice can cause fatal mistakes if it's worded incorrectly. These warning signs should directly explain lethal dangers and how household appliances can turn ordinary everyday activities into deadly ones. 
and this is where the power of the written word is so important. In the book, Pinker also discusses how manipulating the English language can trick readers. He teaches readers true examples all about style and structure of sentences and shows them scams that you should avoid when you're reviewing other people's sentences. And he also provides some advice and inspiration that would help you might write more clearly and ethically using correct grammar and style. And he also caveats all of this by writing explicitly about modern writing. So it's definitely a modern grammar book that you would need on your shelf. He says, we can remind ourselves of the reasons to strive for good style to enhance the spread of ideas, to exemplify attention to detail, and to add to the beauty of the world. The next grammar book that belongs on your shelf is by Grammar Girl, aka Mignon Fogarty. It's called Grammar Girl's Quick and Dirty Tips for Better Writing. It's a New York Times bestseller, and it's a lighthearted read that takes an engaging approach to what could be a dry topic. In fact, Grammar Girl has actually spoken on some talk shows about grammar, so she knows how to communicate about this topic to readers and to listeners who may otherwise switch off. The book has lots of different uh, tricks and fun ways that you can remember uh, tricky grammar guidelines and avoid some embarrassing writer mistakes, and it also provides some tips that you can use to improve your writing. The next grammar book that belongs on your writing shelf was published all the way back in 1980, and since then it's sold over 2 million copies worldwide and been reprinted several times. It's called Practical English Usage by Michael Swan. Now Michael Swan takes grammar pretty seriously. He said, grammatical correctness after all has a powerful symbolic value. Getting your language right implies that you can obey rules and respect authority. A bold commandment for Michael Swan, and I'd probably say that today, when you're writing online, there is sometimes a case for breaking grammar rules, but best to understand them before you break them. So practical English usage addresses both English speaking and written grammar, and it's written in such a way that it's easy to comprehend and you use it as a type of a reference book. It focuses heavily on vocabulary, and it talks about how you can get things straight in your written word and also when you're talking to someone. It also covers idioms and common styles, addresses spelling issues and other mistakes that plague even the best writers. Again, it's another heavyweight grammar book that you're going to put on your writing shelf and look up when you have a perplexing problem. The next grammar book on this list has sold over half a million copies and it was published back in 2001. It's called Write, Write and it was written by Jan Vanolia and it's been republished several times since then. It's a bit different to some of the other grammar books I featured in that it also contains illustrations as well as items and queries that you can look up. So it's a type of reference book, but also a type of read. Granted, it's a heavyweight tomb, so it's not something you're going to read in one or multiple sittings. Now, the book uses clear explanations and illustrations to help readers understand the importance of language rules, like the semicolon, the punctuation marks, apostrophes, and so on. And there's a bit of humor and color thrown into the book too. And because it's a reference book, it's kept up to date regularly, which is fantastic. And lots of writers like this book because it evolves as the usage of grammar evolves too. Basically, if you're looking for an explanation to a grammatical rule with examples, this is probably the reference book that you're going to pull out. The next grammar book that could belong on your writing shelf, depending on where you live, is called Basic English Grammar for Dummies. Now, you may be familiar with the Four Dummies brand because they cover a wide range of topics. Basically, their job is to take a concept and educate it to somebody who's new to the topic. And that's what they do with this grammar book. It covers commonly confused words, top grammar mistakes to avoid, and has lots of different examples and ways that you can become more confident with the English language. Definitely one to pick up, but I do say that with a caveat. So if you're based in the United States, the correct English grammar rules are somewhat different to the grammar rules in the United Kingdom or Australia or in Ireland where I am. So for example, you could potentially spell the word realize, I-Z-E, in the United States, whereas in Ireland it's spelled I-S-E with an S. Similarly, you could spell center, T-E-R, whereas in the United Kingdom and Ireland it's T-R-E. So do bear that in mind when you're picking up a grammar book. Ask yourself where is the author based and what is the audience for this particular grammar book in question. And then if somebody points out that there is a grammar mistake that you've made, you could point out that that's because it's meant for an American or British English audience. Not every grammar book needs to be a weighty tome. Enter several short sentences about writing by Verlin Klinkerberg. It's a distinctive and short book that you can put in your bag and carry with you and then pull out whenever you want to improve your writing. So you can see here on screen an example of just how short the sections in the book are. How short is short? That depends on the length of the sentences you're used to writing. 
One way to keep sentences short is to keep the space between them as empty as possible. I don't mean the space between the period at the end of one sentence and the first word of the next. I mean the space between the period and the subject of the next sentence. So there are lots of practical examples in the book that the author illustrates through short passages just like this. So it's a succinct, or a succinct I should say, and clever little grammar book that you can bring around with you and pull out whenever you want to improve your skills. Grammar books are fantastic. They are a great way of educating yourself about how to use the English language. But I also like using grammar checking software like Grammarly. I use grammar checking software because it can help me review my work and review the work by other freelance writers. And then because I'm using the premium version, I can see or get some context behind a particular grammar mistake. So this will help me find and fix errors faster and also improve my knowledge of English grammar. And after all, what better way to improve your knowledge of English grammar than by putting these rules to use in your own work. Now I have a discount for Grammarly and I'll include a link to that in the description below this video. So I hope you enjoyed the content all about the best grammar books for writers. If you did, I also have a much longer post where I profile some of the other best grammar books that are out there, because believe me, there are a lot. And I'll also include a link to that in the notes below this video. If you did enjoy the content, hit thumbs up. And if you want to get more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel.